The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Let's take a look at the DAX this morning, folks. This is a long-term weekly chart, uh, as you can see. And I would like to point out those little half-moon cycles that you see in that area. That's just a simple cycle program that most of uh, these uh, platforms have, of course. But that originated with, of course, uh, William Hurst, uh, Jim's Hurst's uh, uh, work on the profit magic of stock transaction timing, which was written in 1970, yeah, 1970 uh, by McGraw-Hill. And, of course, later in life, I was fortunate enough to have Mr. Hurst's account. He was a retired fisherman. <laughs> well, he was a fisherman. He was an engineer at, uh, at um, Lockheed, and he uh, retired to go fishing up in Grass Valley in Nevada City. That's on the in the Sierra Nevada Mountains right there a little uh, east of uh uh, uh, Reno, Nevada, right on the California-Nevada border, and he fished all the time. He did two trades with me over a four-year period. Both of them worked. Uh, not a lot of money, but, you know, he, it was a stock stock trades. It was actually uh, uh, we didn't have ETFs and stuff like that, but what the heck was it? That, no, it was a bond. It was a bond trade. Excuse me. It was a bond trade. Anyway, uh, the reason why I brought this up about the cycles is the foundation for the study of cycles started way back uh, many, many years ago by Edwin Dewey, and his uh, chief uh, assistant was Gertrude Shirk, and uh, it went along for many, many years and became quite uh, quite popular. And then through the years, it has been gone. Uh, Larry, it is west of Reno, not east. You got that right. I, I, I just realized that. Uh, they, I'm trying to do this by memory here. Uh, Oh dear! Since you know, since we're on to that, let's break let's break stride here a little bit. Let me tell you a funny story about uh, uh, Nevada City and uh, uh, oh, Green Grass Valley and, and Nevada City. I went up to visit Jim. Uh, oh my guys, this was back many many years ago, and. Uh, uh, there was a, uh, a, a inn for sale, a, uh, a restaurant and like a small hotel called the Bret Hart Inn. Bret Hart, I think, was one of the original uh, mountain men or something like that. I don't remember what it was, but this place was in really need of help, but it was really cheap. It was only like $175,000, and I thought I was going to buy the darn thing, but I went and looked at it, and it was really cheap, and it was, it was a cute little place, very rustic and everything. I don't even know if it's still there now, but I I finally, I didn't do it, but then somebody bought it after that and made it pretty nice. But that's what I remember about that area. It is really, really, really nice. Okay, let me get back to the story now that I'll get my train of thought right. Richard Smith, I believe, is taking over the, for the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, and uh, L.A. is east of Reno. I don't think so. No, that is not right, Russ. Cannot be. Uh, is it? Is that possible with the way the move— no, I don't think that can be. You guys are confusing me this morning. Give me a break. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, very interesting to come on the show. And what we're hoping to do is to have a segment every uh, every two weeks where we come on and they'll they'll discuss some of the cycles that we're that they're seeing in the market as they see them. We don't know what the structure is going to be yet yet, but they do want to come on and tell the folks what they're doing, give you a chance to look at the products that they're going to be offering, and uh, stuff like that. So I think it'll be interesting. Interesting. They they spend a lot of time, you know, bringing out some really good stuff. You know, oh, L.A. moved due because of global warming, and then the uh, uh, the uh, San Andreas fault. I forgot about that. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is something that I might understand, and only minimally, is to take a look at the 60 minute on the German DAX. By the way, our guest today will be Tim Bost, Financial Cycles Weekly, an award winning newsletter writer, and as you can see. Uh, 
the German DAX uh, popped up to that high at uh, 13,380, and now we've dropped about 300 handles down, very similar to what we're seeing in some of the other markets that we're watching, like the S&P. Yes, uh, uh, Jake Bernstein is big, and also, I believe, um, uh, Tom DeMarc and also Larry Williams are going to be looking at it. So we'll be able to see. Ruby's asking us to take a look at platinum for retracement. Yes, Ruby, we are certainly looking at that. That is a very, very interesting one. And I will bring that up for you right now. I believe you'll be able to see it down there a little bit lower. And that's what I'm looking at because I'm not sure that this gold will get back to. We'll take a look at the platinum. Ruby, if you just look at this, you have to do your imagination because this was sent out Sunday. But if you have the A, B, C, D pattern with your 707 being the uh, the C leg, so the A, B, C, D leg on that takes you right down to, you won't believe this, Ruby, but 838 per ounce. Uh, is it, I don't even know where platinum is trading this morning, but the key that we've been talking about with this gold market, folks, if you remember, ever since uh, last uh, week when we made that low at, 14, at 1447, 1446.90 was low, 1440. We well, last night, folks, we rallied exactly $34, which is the harmonic number in gold, and it stopped, and it's dropped $9. Uh, I mean, if it was really good, it wouldn't have done that. So that $34, that $34 number is really, really very, very important. So uh, these these harmonic numbers have have meaning, and then you know when you add them up with the with the ratios and stuff, it's very, very popular. You know. Reno is west of L.A., Marshall. Are you kidding me? Wow. I didn't know that. That's for the slope of the, yeah, let me see. Wow. I would have never have thought that. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Well, that's why I'm not a geologist. <laughs> oh, Google. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's move on here uh, to the next one here that we want to chat about. But uh, getting back to that gold market, folks, uh, let, let's just walk through the numbers right now. We rallied $34 from the bottom. Okay, that was last Thursday. Okay, it took five days to get that thirty-four dollars. So if we look quickly up there, thirty-four dollars. This is really a really tough one because uh, if you look at Fibonacci numbers, thirty-four twenty-one. So a twenty-one dollar retracement from that level, seventy-nine. Right, is going to take you down to where? Uh, down to about uh, fifty-eight. So you really need to watch the price of. 1458 because we go below that that's not going to be a very very good sign so and remember the low that we made the secondary low on the retrace retracement was 1458 so uh, it's going to be very very interesting here to watch the gold so pay sort of close attention to that as you walk through and look at your charts each day but that's what's happening in the gold market silver has been lagging badly and that's another one that uh, you know still could make that price level that we've been watching for a very very long time and that is way down there at the uh, 15 uh, 16 uh, uh, 16 dollars and uh, 20 cent level. I'll bring this up on the weekly so you can see it where the 61% retracement comes in. I posted a gold chart. I thought I did, but let me see if I did. I don't know. You're right. I didn't do that. Thank you very much. Okay, Goldie, 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 where are you, Gold? Oh, dear. What happened? Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. This happens to be where we are. Let's get this up here and we'll be able to see it. Here we go. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I uh, want to talk first about the hog market. Ruby's talked about hogs. We've been watching this, folks, for well over two weeks, and here we are at 62 and a half. This is the low we made, and so we're sitting right there. If hogs open lower, Ruby, get out. Shut the front door and lock the door because they're going to probably go a lot lower. But this is the bottom if these numbers mean anything or not. So I don't know where they're trading this morning, but that pod pattern is complete and it's got everything you can go for. It's extremely oversold. The thing that's that's really strange about it is you got this really bullish news about Chinese tariffs uh, abating and all this other stuff and the hog uh, a f flu problem that they have over in China, yet the darn thing ain't rallying. This is not a good sign. So let's keep in mind that, uh, you know, this is not acting bullish uh, as far as the news. So I just hope that helps. Okay, the next one that someone asked about, when we talk about the uh, harmonic number for gold as being 34 and the half harmonic as being 17. Okay, the reason why we have those numbers is because of Mr. James Twentyman. Twentyman is a numbers cruncher. That's all he's ever done. And he, when he was working for me, he would go every afternoon over to the Investment Center book, bookstore and work with some of Jerry Bomering's uh, friends. Um, you know, I think, what was it? Bradley Cohen was one of them. There's a whole bunch of guys that were there. Well, not there are three or four of them. And they worked on numbers and stuff like that. And what Twentyman did, we had a computer at Drexel that we had had when we were at Conti. Jim and I both bought it. And that little computer, all it did was crunch numbers. And what he did was he went into the database and he would start looking at bonds and he would start looking at gold. No crude oil contracts, of course, but we would look at beans and we would look at wheat and we would look at corn, the things that were trading. When We would notice that when the prints came out that we'd see spikes of uh, swings of $34 and $17 in gold. 
very, very prominent. And the S&P, which uh, we didn't start trading until 1980, it was uh, April of 82, what they did was they went and looked at all these different swings, and the average swing in the S&P years ago was five and a half points, and the secondary number was three and a half points. That's when we were trading 10 handles. That would be equivalent to 10 E-minis. So now, because the market is, is more volatile, you're going to see harmonic numbers of 15, okay, and 25 in the S&P. And the average number now, I believe the average swing is still about 5.5. Okay, Ruby is asking, no, uh, cattle look totally different, Ruby. The cattle chart is, uh, that's a flagpole deer. Uh, just uh, be careful. That, that could turn around any time. But the hog market is really, look, it's in a downtrend. It's setting exactly at the 78% level. Uh, there's nothing up there in cattle. I mean, I mean, I can't see it. I mean, it's been straight up for six weeks ever since, uh, you know, uh, Rich Anderson talked to us about that. Uh, and also Mr. Z talked to us about that big ABCD pattern that was uh, setting there in cattle. And the fact is, we'll take a look at this because you can see it real easily. If you don't believe in patterns, here's the... Here's the cattle chart, and you'll notice here that uh, from the April down to the June low, the market rallied up to a 382 retracement. Bada bing, bada boom, it hits uh, 99 bucks a pound, and look at it, it went up to 120 something and changed. So, uh, you know that's uh, that's what you want. These patterns don't work all the time, but nothing else does either, boys and girls. You know, you look, look at look at James Simmons, the best trader, the best investor we've had over the past 30 years, and he's only right 50% of the time. But on that 50%, he's very, very right. And that's the key, you know, to be there. Let your plot profits run and uh, get out when you are in doubt. That's the main thing that you want to keep uh, looking at. Now, I wanted to do uh, one other one that I wanted to talk about, and that is Softy, Microsoft. Let's get this up here. This is something we've been watching for quite some time. Let's get it up here, and you're going to be able to see here. You'll notice here we had a lot of resistance up at that 142 level, and look what happened when we had that resistance. You see how it gapped above there? That was at the 146 level. We gapped uh, that day. I believe it was an earnings announcement. And now we're very, very close to that ABCD pattern, which is about 152. We got to 151 yesterday. So that pattern could possibly uh, be... Uh, be very, very important. But the main reason why I wanted to bring this to your attention is, is that if you will look at those two dark black lines there, that's where the market busted against the old highs, came back and tested it one more time, right at a 38% retracement, and then continued higher, and then it gapped above it. Those folks, by technical standards, are called exhaustion gaps. Uh, we don't know how high they're going to go, but the market is exhausting at that time. So, Try to keep in mind that that's what we're looking at as we go through some of these things that we're we're seeing uh, happening each day. So that's my two cents worth. So let's keep it going. By the way, next week we're going to have a very special guest, Sim only. Uh, will be on the uh, of Sylvia's Financial and also Farm Bureau. Uh, he runs Farm Bureau's uh, hedging operations now. So. Uh, his company has merged with them, and so that'll be really interesting to uh, chat with him. And we'll talk a little bit about the status of the grain markets because the you know the crops are in the bin now, so we should be looking at supply demand, and uh, we'll see. And they've held up extremely well, and we're still looking for that pattern in the March soybeans, folks. Uh, it'll be next week we'll have him on. Oh, Nick, not next week. Next week, next week the cowboy is gone. Thanks for reminding me, Bill. I don't want to miss those few days that I get off. So, and boy, I've all the times I really need these few days off because I've been pushing the old hammer at both ends here, having a lot of fun, but I'm a little bit tired, uh, but I'm going to be fine. Anyway, and also what else we need to do here uh, this morning? I think we're going to cover that. Okay, we do have Tim Boss coming up in about uh, six minutes to talk to us about Mercury because Mercury has gone direct as of uh, today, and I think that's going to be something that will be uh, really, really important, I believe. Yep, Mercury is in direct station today. And Mercury was one of the things that, uh, well, it was the main thing 
that uh, we uh, we uh, when we were watching some of these things with George Bear. Bear was a, uh, a very very successful speculator back in the 30s. He he had a, a rail car that he took from Carmel, California, where he lived, into Chicago, and he would be there, you know, during the summer. And then in the winters, he would be in uh, Carmel. I was fortunate enough to meet his daughter. She was in a nursing home that was being serviced by my very dear friend Jack Valenti, and I was talking to Jack once about George. George Bear and Mercury, and he said, you know, I've got a Georgia Bear uh, in, a, in a nursing home there. By golly, it was his daughter. Went up and visited with her. Tony and I both did, and she had some really great pictures that she promised to give me, but the attorney, after she passed away, you know, how that stuff goes. And anyways, that would have been really nice to see pictures of, uh, oh, that was just really, uh, it was really cool. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Gosh, the break is coming up already that quickly. Oh, my goodness, shut the front door and raise the rent. The $64 question is, uh, let's move up here to this, uh, this one second here, uh, is whether or not, and let's get this up here, let's get this up here right here, and whether this pattern that we have here in the NASDAQ is going to mean anything. Now, remember yesterday we talked about the Dow Jones being up 13 days in a row, and that's why we got the reversal, I believe, because we got up to 28,120. We brought, broke about 300 points off of that, but that's really not very much. So it's still, you know, still in an uptrend, I would think. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Tim Bost on the line. Timothy, are you there? I am indeed. How are you, sir? I am very good, my friend. I am very good. How's your weather down there in uh, Sarasota? Well, it's a little cooler than uh, no normal. We're mid-70s, yeah. so compared to the rest of the country, we're doing fine. <laughs> well, speaking of being cool, we are in a balmy 67 today with rain coming in. If we'd had this show on about two hours ago, you wouldn't have been able to, uh, you wouldn't even been able to hear me think. So oh, it's, okay. uh, anyway, let's uh, just for a second here, I want to bring up this, your headline of your newsletter and everything, and then get started to okay. go through it, go through because we're going to be talking about mercury today as mercury is uh, going direct station. Is that correct? That is correct. We've had mercury okay. retrograde for the past three weeks, and it's time for a change. Now, that, that mercury, in, in, in astrology terms, mercury retrograde is, is really a big deal, isn't it, for all astrologers? Well, that's, that's true because uh, it's a phenomenon that we get fairly frequently. It occurs about three times each year. And uh, mercury is associated with uh, communication and transportation and trading and the markets and the ability to make things happen. And so when uh, it goes backwards, at least from our uh, earthbound perspective, mm -hmm. uh, as it does three times a year for about three weeks each time, uh, then things get messed up in all those areas. Uh, so we yeah. Our market analysis is a little less reliable. Uh, we have uh, long lines at the airports, and uh, uh, you know, um, uh, we play phone tag and things of that sort. Uh, so it uh, becomes a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, a little bit. I think so. That's for sure. Uh, did you ever read anything? I watched a. Uh, one, I'm, I always like to watch the uh, History Channel, and they had a special on Einstein, and the way that he proved his theory of relativity was uh, had something to do with the way Mercury was uh, doing its eclipse thing. That it only happened, you know, every so often, and he had to be in Africa, or someone had to be in Africa to take pictures of it to make sure. Did you ever see that program, or do you know anything I, about I that? I didn't see that program. I'm unfamiliar with that. Uh, what he was working with was what we call a Mercury transit of the sun. Uh, during the Mercury retrograde period, uh, we have the Mercury uh, alignment with the sun occurring uh, each time. But what's mm -hmm. unusual is that sometimes it'll be aligned both horizontally and vertically. And so we can actually see uh, the body of the planet Mercury moving across the face of the sun. Of course, we don't stare mm -hmm. at that with the, the naked eye. It's done through high power <laughs> telescopes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see this little teeny dot moving across a section of the sun as Mercury uh, transits over the face of the sun. What's going on is that Mercury is between the Earth and the sun, and that's a fairly rare phenomenon phenomenon, and uh, uh, we, based on Einstein's calculations, he was able to prove uh, the, the distance and the differences and so forth uh, to validate some of his theories with that phenomenon. Wow, I tell you, this, uh, <laughs> that's so far above this old cowboy's pay grade. I, I, let's change subjects. Uh, Tim, okay. I wanna, the, uh, you have written, you've written a, a book about short-term trading and uh, mercury and stuff. Is right. that correct? So mercury, money, and the markets. Uh, and huh. it's all about using uh, astro trading techniques for short-term trading, huh. focusing primarily on mercury, of course. Huh. Mercury, right. money, and the markets is available at Amazon.com. And uh, encourage folks that are interested in this kind of thing. Thing, to pick up a copy and read it. Okay. Uh, did you ever uh, do any of the work with George Bear and his uh, the way he looked at the speed of Mercury? Did yes, you ever... I've done some research there, and I have to admit that that research is still ongoing. Uh, uh -huh. Bear was was uh, timing wheat markets uh, using the speed of, of Mercury and did a lot of his examples uh, there. Uh, what I've been trying to do is, is build models uh, applying this, the same methodology to other markets as well, uh, and I uh -huh. believe it's going to have validity. But uh, you know, I got lots of lots of irons in the fire here, and that's one of those that has been yeah. backburned a little bit. Yeah, I actually met uh, his daughter. You know, I, oh, I was really? telling the folks before you came on. Yeah, she was living in a nursing home up in uh, uh, Carmel, California. Actually, she was in Monterey, which is right next door to, to Carmel. And uh, my buddy Jack Fellini owned three pharmacies, and he serviced these in these nursing homes. And I was oh. chatting with him about uh, Mercury and uh, George Bear, and he said, "Hey, I got a Georgia Bear here at the <laughs> at a nursing home." Oh, and I, we called her up, and it was 
daughter. We went up, Tony and I drove up there. It was only about, oh. from San Luis, it was only a couple hours. And uh -huh. we spent, oh, good three hours visiting with her. And she had some wonderful pictures of, uh, you know, gosh, uh, <laughs> it was just really amazing. Uh, of some of his buddies from Chicago, because he would take his his rail car. She had beautiful pictures of the this custom rail car, just like out of the wild, wild west, you know, at a bar. Wow. Uh, yeah, and then he would take that into uh, Chicago, and then he would stay there uh, during the summer, and then in, he would winter there uh, in Monterey. So, uh, but it was very interesting. He was very successful. He left. It was he left a pretty substantial estate, so she was able to live comfortably the rest of, of her life. But we never what? got into talking about you know whether he was super millionaire. He was happy. That was the main thing that she well, said. It's that, always the best thing, right? Yeah, the happiness is certainly better than some of the money that uh, you see some of these guys. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, quite, quite an education uh, for me. I, I uh, you know, of course, knew, knew a bear knew that he had lived in Carmel, but in terms of personal details, I, did, I didn't know he had a daughter and uh, yeah. or a rail car. And in fact, yeah. I've been uh, looking for some time to try to find a photograph of, of George Bear. So if you've got I, access to that, I, let me know. No, I don't have have that the, she promised me she says when I am finished she said you know I'll have the attorney and when she when J Jack told me when she passed away and I talked to the attorney and uh, he said well uh, so I'll get back to you and then you know you know how that goes and uh, oh yeah <laughs> I, you know, there was a nice she had a nice little box it wasn't a shoe box it was a really nice box and she had her pictures and some letters in there and but uh, oh. so the really really neat little pictures of the floor and uh, down at the stockyards he used to like to go down there and uh, it was uh, it was really uh, really quite interesting. So I, I posted in here your uh, coming cycles for the Nep Mercury and Neptune cycles. It seemed they're they're all coming due here between now and uh, Pearl Harbor Day. It looks like. Right. Uh, what we're looking at here is, in fact, uh, the Mercury retrograde return on Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, that uh, Mercury went to retrograde on Halloween, and so uh, it today begins its forward motion again. A week from today, we've got Neptune station coming up, and uh, what we're looking at is the cumulative impact really focusing uh, on uh, the 7th of December. Of course, the markets are closed that day. It's on Saturday, so we may see the impact in trading as early as the 6th or at least by the following Monday. Uh, and we're looking at that as a pretty strong inflection point uh, for the markets, essentially based on the back testing of the Mercury uh, direct station cycles and the Neptune direct station cycles. Uh, what we're anticipating is a period of some trading congestion uh, between now and then, uh, you know, moderately so, with a little bit of a bullish bias and then a, 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 move to, uh, a stronger move to the upside uh, around that Pearl Harbor Day mark. Okay, that makes really good sense. Well, it's really amazing when you look at these that they, uh, they're they're very harmonic, as you might say. <laughs> they they exactly. certainly uh, they certainly line up pretty good. Uh, one other question that I wanted to ask you uh, about the research material. Someone else has asked this question. Where do you get your research material for your astro data uh, information, uh, Tim? Are you able to tell us that? Uh, I'm not sure what the question is. The, the, the data, the when you get data, the, data. Your, yeah, your well, Astro, I use, you know, I used to use Neil Michelson, you know, down at Astro Computing, right. but uh, where, where do you get your, where do you get your data for astrology? Well, there's an ephemeris, uh, which is a recording of the planetary positions, and that's the primary good. tool that we use. Okay, good. Stay with us, Tim. We got a little break, and we'll be right back with you. Okay, great. You bet. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. <clears throat> okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly out of Florida. Tim uh, posted a chart of the Mercury Direct Stations for the S&P, and we were just talking about those dates, and you've got it lined up. Gee, this is about as uh, about as clear as you can get. It looks like December 7th could be a pretty substantial uh, potential bottom coming in there. Yeah, we're, we're looking for that. Uh, again, we're, we're anticipating between now and then, uh, th and by the way, today is that zero mark in the middle of the date of the uh, direct station. And so uh, we've projected that forward to uh, the December uh, 7th mark. Uh, and uh, certainly there's a, a moderate uh, uptrend, a, a slightly bullish edge, uh, but basically a congested pattern mm -hmm. until that point. And then we're looking for things to accelerate more aggressively to the upside after that. Okay, boy, that looks really, uh, that's very interesting. I, I love this stuff. I just wish I could understand it better, but uh, I, I well, think God that's why we get is, together so we can talk about it. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, <laughs> God bless. God bless. That's for sure. Hold on just a second here. Uh, hopefully, we'll get down there in January and get to see you again. Hold on. Oh, let's take a look great. here at this next one. You want to tell us what we're looking at here on the next one, uh, the Mercury Station? The, this, the is Nep, this is Nep, excuse me, Neptune. Right, we got Neptune, the Neptune station. station up now. Okay. Now this yeah, is and, this and, is really and, this is really long term, right? Right. This is a, a much uh, a longer uh, phase uh, retrograde period. Mercury is retrograde uh, for about uh, three weeks each time that it happens. Uh, Neptune about six months. So uh, what we're looking at is uh, a, a slightly longer uh, phase uh, dynamic. Uh, and again, w w because we have more frequent Mercury retrograde periods, uh, we can have a lot more data for our back testing. Uh, your uh, 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 listener was asking about how we do the research and basically what we're looking looking at uh, is going back and, and checking the previous uh, positions and comparing that to the uh, market dynamics. And so with uh, we get about three times as many Mercury retrograde stations uh, and, and direct stations as we do the Neptune ones. Uh, so uh, we have a little bit smaller sample to, to work with uh, with our research. But typically what happens is uh, that uh, there's a congested period coming into the Mer uh, Neptune uh, direct station, which will occur on uh, uh, the 27th of November. 
November, a, a week from today, uh, and that zero mark there marks the, the 27th mm -hmm. of November. Uh, so then mm -hmm. coming out of that, uh, we go about uh, 12, 10, 12 days uh, past that, and we get to that same uh, point of December the 7th, uh, Pearl mm -hmm. Harbor Day, and what I did was simply mark on uh, that with an arrow showing the trend coming out, out of that. Uh, so the, this uh, correspondence then of the Mercury cycle with the Neptune cycle, uh, we believe is going to provide substantial reinforcement uh, for some bullish expectations as we move into the uh, shank of December. Wow. You know, it's interesting what you mentioned, uh, November 27th. That's the day before Thanksgiving. That's the single most positive day uh, in the stock market. I think it's up uh, It's up roughly, uh, I think, 75% of the time on that date. Right. It's so, a strong uh, yeah. percentage, right. Yeah, yeah it, it, it certainly is. And it's, if it comes in at a bottom, that would really be an interesting pattern to uh, take a look at it. Now, the next one we want to talk about is you're having a, uh, a free webinar. This is really Now, these come with a double money-back guarantee. Is that correct? You've got it. We'll, we'll triple money back if you pay for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to tell us what that is and how the folks well, can uh, we'll be log on to about uh, the uh, dynamics. Actually, we're, we'll be doing this uh, next Tuesday on the 26th of, of November, and we've got a, a link there. Uh, you can go to uh, bit.ly slash AT88WEB, uh, and uh, I just checked that link, and there's a small problem with it, so we should have that corrected within the next 30 minutes, and, and you actually okay. go to a register registration page, <laughs> but uh, okay. uh, give us a half an hour and we'll get all that fixed at this end. At any rate, uh, on Tuesday, we'll be talking about what's working now in astro trading. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to review some of the uh, latest research uh, that we're doing and also talk a little bit about some of the membership programs and training programs that we have available here at okay. financialcyclesweekly.com. Yeah. Hey, Tim, what is this bit.ly slash at88web? Is that a like a web uh, web? address? Yes, it is, uh, and it is uh, an abbreviated uh, uh, web address. Uh, that uh, uh, bit.ly is a, a kind of a, a one of the services that condenses these long uh, uh, web addresses into something a little bit more manageable. So we try to use that uh, to make it easier for folks to remember and to, to jot uh, that down. Why didn't I think of that? Hey, Tim, thanks for joining us, my friend. I really appreciate you coming on. We'll have you again uh, right after the holiday, uh, long before Christmas, of course. So enjoy the Thanksgiving with your lovely family, and uh, we'll have you back on soon, okay? We'll be doing that. Really, really appreciate the time with you, as always. Larry. Uh, have a great always, day. always like talking to you, and especially today when we talked about uh, George Bear and Mercury. That, oh, that brought that's back a lot of memories. Yeah. I, I, I wish yeah. I had, had been a fly on the wall for that one. That, that's, that's, that's <laughs> Me <fabulous>. too. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to or, discuss more details yeah. if we can get together in January. It'd be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. wish, I wish I would have recorded it. That's for sure. That's uh, the main thing that we want to be watching for sure. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Tim. We really appreciate it, my friend. It was, Thanks, Larry. Uh, have a great day. Yeah, you bet. Bye. Okay, folks, that was Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Remember, on Friday, we are going to have David Paul and Tom Hugard. David Paul might not be able to make it, but we'll still be able to watch the uh, I have Tom Hugard on for sure. He's definitely said he's going to be on. So we want to be able to uh, see how these things are going to uh, work as we go through here this morning. Okay, now let's. What we're looking at the gold now. We got down to uh, 1469, I believe. Yeah, 1469 and a half. We're trading at 1470. Now 69 is a very important number because we're down now 11 dollars from the high. None of our retracements that we've had since uh, that low we made has been more than. $11. Remember, 17 is the half harmonic in gold. One, 618 of 17 is 11. So that's how those numbers uh, sort of line up. So pay attention to it. May or may not be something. I don't know. But I'm going to uh, do something here today since I've been, you know, folks, I've been working on the AI program for some time, and we have a very unusual setup going on. And I don't know if it's going to mean anything or not, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to post it in here so you folks can... Uh, Take a look at it. Now, remember, this is has nothing to do with price, folks. That red line is time. In other words, around 11 o'clock.
o'clock in about an hour and 10 minutes, uh, the market should start down. And if it goes 20 minutes and it's not starting down, this thing is wrong. And remember, the last part of the day from 1430 to 1530 is the least reliable. And the reason for that is it's gone through 252 two-minute two, two uh, two two bars. And so the probability is the fact that after you've gone through so many that the probability after that distance is going to change. And that's why the last part of the day, not always, but the last part of the day is usually most difficult uh, to uh, to watch. So that's uh, keep that in mind as we look at some of these things. Uh, would be so kind as to someone give me an idea of what is happening with the little piggies this morning. Have they held that uh, um, 62, uh, 50 level? I'd like to know that. Uh, you know, to see that. By the way, Tom's uh, program from London is available. If you're interested in it, go to tradertom.com. Uh, it's the whole t th the whole two days. So it, uh, see, there's no good. Uh, Mar thank you very much, Mar Yeah, it's no good, uh, Ruby. Uh, we went below. See, we're 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 a full handle below it. So that's it's no good. That's why it was. Uh, I, I I didn't trade the hogs today. I, I was thinking about it, but I just got so many things to do. Today is medical uh, blood day. I gotta do some blood tests of course, and then my big physicals on Friday. Anyway, let's move on here. As you get older, you have these happening every year. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I have posted right now, if you'll just take a quick look at it for our good friend Paul. This is the right from the CME, folks. This shows you your open interest on your E-mini S&P futures. As you can see here on the far right, that shows you the net increase in open interest for that particular thing. And you'll notice it was up, this is for the E-mini futures, so it's up 13,000. The total open interest is 2.79 million. And as you can see, the daily trading volume is one point. So it trades one half of the open interest uh, every day. Now, when you're looking at the uh, contracts for Treasury notes and Treasury uh, Treasury bonds, you're going to be something. Uh, well, not the Treasury bonds, but Treasury notes are going to be three times that size. So they're the biggest Treasury notes, and then followed by the S and P. But remember, the S and P is one tenth of what it used to be. So it's still the most actively traded thing that we have going as far as all that. You're making fun of my uh, my physical prowess. Yes, I do the Ironman competition. I've won it three times. And this year, they've changed it a little bit. It used to be Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, McDonald's. And this year, they're switching it over to IHOP because of the specials they're having on the uh, pancakes. It's going to be IHOP, Applebee's, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, IHOP Apple. Oh, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. So it'll be an interesting uh, things when we do this in January over in Honolulu. And if you believe any of that stuff, folks, you'll know that my medications have run out, and it's time to see the doctor uh, Friday to get my medications updated. But have to have a little fun at this, so we'll see what's going on. Now. The question is, what about, uh, folks, we had $11 correction today in the gold. Now, that we went from uh, almost 80, 1480 down to 1469. That $11 is very, very important. I've already talked to you about that. That's uh, the main thing. Uh, AK Steve, let me tell you, the IHOP will knock Denny's off the wall. As far as I'm concerned, is breakfasts. Don't go there often, but when I do, we do like IHOP. Okay, let's uh, get back on the road here tomorrow. Uh, no guests, but uh, on Friday, we will have David Paul and Tom Hugard. Uh, not a problem. And then next week is holiday week. And then in December, we're going to have some special guests, some surprise guests. 877-927-6648.